introduce you to my lovely wife, Storm, from X-Men. She has superpowers, right? Yeah, it's but, natural. Right. It's natural. She is absolutely amazing, but this is not one of her superpowers. No. So let me tell you what she did to me today. Uh -oh. So I had this pair of pants at home, oh. and I can't stand them. They feel like cardboard, like I'm wearing cardboard. I walk like this. <laughs> and so I told her, I said, I don't like these pants, and I don't want to wear them. But every time she buys something, she says, would you look good in it? I said, but I can't breathe. Right? <laughs> and I said, I have to preach. So I put the pants away. I hang them up, and I'm like, I am done with it's those It's been pants. about a year. So today I'm at the mall. She calls me. She says, I bought this outfit for you, and I want you to come see it. I said, no, 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 no. I don't like shopping. So I said, I trust you. I love you. You would never do anything to me to hurt me. So I get home and she pulls the pants out. The same Jeez. pants. And they're the same pants. <laughs> I told her, I said, really? You bought me the same pair of pants. So that, tonight I'll be preaching like this. That says that I must really like those pants to yes. buy them and I remember. Yeah. I told her the pants are a prison. All right. You guys ready? You know what? Come on, give Jesus another shout. You know Let's what? get into um, it. Amen. Just so you know a little bit about us, we, we are the proud mother and father of four children. Uh, this is our second marriage, however, so I always tell everybody we can speak about everything with, except yes. for whittle, whittle being a widow, and I don't want to speak about that, Me so neither. I don't want that. But uh, we, we really blended family. Um, I have two children. He had one. We came together. There was three. Then we had ours. So now we have four. So we have his, mine's, ours. Yes. So the blended family thing was something we really went through yes. uh, when we were first married. Yeah. It was a challenge. We'll talk about some of those examples yeah. tonight. So um, we can talk about almost anything. Right. Being yeah. single, Come on. being divorced, being remarried, blended family, yeah. all of those things. We have four children and five grandbabies. Yes. And one on the way. Another so one on the way. Six. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right. All so right. here we go. Can we go? And I'll just kind of direct you. You can you can help us tonight. Um, everybody say what lies within. What lies within. Say it again. What lies within. What lies within. All right. Can we go to our slide there? Thank you. All right. So let's think about this for a second. Um, a lot of people are focused on the outside, right? And a lot of people are into appearances. And God is not into appearances. Matter of fact, God doesn't care what you look like. Right. He cares about what's your inner life or what's on the inside. Right. And the scripture tells us like this, Pastor Kendra. 3 John 1 and 2, it says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and what? Be in, be in, be in, health. be in health. But here's the key. Not because you work out, not because you take vitamins and supplements. That you be in health as your soul, soul prospers. So health comes from your soul. So you're better off not working out and renewing your mind with the word of God than not renewing your mind and working out. Amen. Because all you're going to do is die looking good. <laughs> right? Let's go to the next one. So here you go, babe. Okay. The most, okay. See, all this fancy this technology. Is cool. Wow. This is just cool. <laughs> it is cool. Go back one for me. Pastor's probably going to buy go. one now. <laughs> Okay, we're, we're here? Yeah. You got it? You want me to read okay. it? You got it? Yeah, you got it. All right. In today's culture, we tend to be focused on our outer life or our appearances. The Bible tells us that our inner life is actually more important if you are single or married. Tonight is critical that you develop a healthy inner life in order to fulfill God's, God's will, will for you. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of do a drive-by. Not a whole, whole lot of time. And sometimes in church, we want God to do everything, right? But sometimes God starts a journey and you have to complete it by taking responsibility, as Pastor Mauricio said. So we're just going to leave you tonight with one word. We're going to teach you the concept of one word. And then we want you to take that word and carry it into your devotion. Yes. So we're not going to, it's not going to be complete tonight. But we want to introduce you to something called your inner life and a concept about your inner life that you can every day from now on take it into your devotion, take it into your study time, and say, God, I need you to deal with this. Yes. And we're going to explain what that is in a moment. Next for us, please. Okay. The most difficult task we face as individuals is actually managing ourselves. How many of y'all would agree? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So why is that? It's because we have to confront the aspects of who we are that we prefer to neglect, forget, or deny. 
This makes it difficult to have a clear vision for ourselves and our families. So here's the elephant in the room. Yeah. When it comes to singleness and marriage, keeping busy, everybody say busy. Busy. Keeping busy sometimes covers up areas we need to address. Yes. And it happens in church. And let me tell you, Christians are the worst at it. Did you tell them I was a direct shooter? I'm trying to get on them. Okay, here, watch, 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 <laughs> watch. No, I'm serious. We got people that bury themselves in church. And can I tell you something? And this, you're going to say, Pastor Mark, you're a heretic. Pastor Marisa, why did you bring him here? But I'm going to tell you something. Salvation is for your eternity. Right. But salvation, and you're going to disagree, but I'm going to take you somewhere tonight. Salvation does not cure everything. Yes. And see, now, if you're religious, you're like, oh, I can't believe he said that. <laughs> it doesn't. There is a responsibility after salvation. Yes. Salvation provides the opportunity for healing, the opportunity for reconciliation. But you have got to do some work. And the main work they have to do, Pastor Kendrick, is you have to read your word. The Bible says in Psalms 119, 11, thy word have it's I hidden it. in my heart. If you don't hide the word in your heart, what you bring to the table before salvation stays on the table. And, and don't ask somebody to lay hands on you. You fall out, get up, and 30 years of abuse is gone. Mm. I'm not saying God won't do it, but I'm going to tell you something. In almost 25 years of ministry, that's not how God does it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not how, and, and because you want God to be a microwave. Right. When he's a crock pot. <laughs> Come on, we got to do some work. So we get busy yeah. and then we cover up. And we're going to give you some examples in a minute. That's what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Right? Almost all of our marriage problems, almost all of them originated with Pastor Kendra. Oh. I was perfect. <laughs> and I'm telling, no, I'm playing. We had a lot of work to do. Yes. So let me tell you this, and you're going to judge me, and it's okay, right? Just don't put it on Facebook. <laughs> so I go to counseling every week. Yeah. So you got sexy and crazy. That's who's on the stage. I go to counseling every week, but I don't call it counseling. I call it strategic coaching. But I go because of what we're getting ready to introduce to you. Because I'm a pastor. She's a pastor. We have a successful church. We have a successful ministry, but I have issues. Yeah. And I'm not going to fake it. And I'm not going to fake it and act like my anointing covers up it takes care of my issues. Right. So, so I have to take care of my issues. And so do you. But you do it in the presence of a God who can heal your issues. Right. Does this make sense? So I'm telling you up front. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute. I go to counseling every single. Do I miss? No. No. But can I share something? You, sh you sure can. can it depends something? on what it is. <laughs> no, play. No. You know, early in our marriage, I would say uh, probably six years. Uh, into our marriage, we hit a spot where we were thinking about getting a divorce because it was just too much. He had an anger problem, a uh, really bad anger Shut problem. No, I, I would call him um, the Incredible Hawk. You know how you're really kind and mild-mannered, and then boom, you're putting holes in walls. He had that type of problem. And at church, everybody got the best person. This is important. But when he came home, we didn't get that person. We got the other person, um, you know, Patience, there was no patience because he used all the patience up outside of the house. And we had 1,200 kids on our youth ministry when we were doing youth. We were youth pastors first. And we had 1,200 kids every week. And our kids would stand in line to talk to their dad, just like the other kids would stand in line. Right. And the concept of getting busy. So we went to counseling for two years. Straight. Straight, every Thursday, trying to rectify our issues. But he had his finger pointing at me. And I had my finger pointing at him. And I had issues too, but he had more than I did. <laughs> so the lady with the prison. He pants. had more than I did. Um, I had issues in my heart. He, he had issues physical that was manifesting. Now, he never touched us or hit us, but he would just have outbursts, you know. So it would be like the kids would be like, okay, who's coming home today? I was an emotional terrorist. You know, yeah. So it, it would be like, okay, let's look at him. If his jaw had a certain, job. he had a, a, a jaw. If his jaw looked a certain way, we can tell, okay. See if I can do it. Yeah. Um, they would go to their room. 
So I'm just yeah. saying sometimes like, and that's stuff that he's not dealt with and it was back from, from elementary school. Yeah. And it followed him into our marriage and, and that's what we're gonna talk about the and things. And I didn't work on it until we went to counseling because I am anointed. Right. And everybody no, told him on. how great he was. Come on. Which he's great now. So guess what I did? No, this is good. Guess what I did? So at church, I'm the hero. At home, I'm the zero. So I find reasons to be at church where nobody's confronting me. Or work. Right, where I'm Superman. Mm -hmm. So I would start making excuses and being busy so I didn't have to cover it up. Right. And also, he's a corporate executive for 3M Company. And when he was working for 3M, and he also were doing ministry as well, he would find times just to not be at home. On purpose. And that's the part about avoiding and neglecting and not wanting to accept the problems and issues that you need to deal with. So there's avoiding and neglecting. And if you're single or married in here today, you have to work on connecting. Yes. I didn't want to connect. No. Does this make sense? Yeah. See, we're transparent, so we just don't, we, we don't care. And that's why, I mean, it just works. We just don't care. I'm going to tell you everything. Some stuff you ain't going to want to hear. You're going to be like, please stop it. But I'm going to tell you because I'd rather you learn from us and not mess up. You have children. You have grandchildren. And I don't want you, and Pastor Kenneth doesn't want you living a life of regret. Right. So now we're going to introduce you to something, whether you're single or married, is something that you need to consider. So here we go. Um, the truth about who we are. If we avoid the journey of dealing with our inner life, everybody say inner life. Inner life. The people we love will eventually suffer and be hurt by our attitudes and our actions. Pastor Virginia, that's what she's describing. I'm a famous out, taking care of everybody, grace for everybody, but not grace for my kids. We had 1,200 teenagers. Man, I was full of grace. I just chose to use it up on the wrong people. It's not that I didn't have it. I just didn't use it for the right people, which is my family. That's why I love this conference. Tonight, we're going to introduce the concept of the shadow. Everybody say the shadow. The shadow. The shadow is huge. This could begin the journey. They may heal you. Some of you need to be healed. Yes. Some of you need to be enriched. And some of you just need to be enhanced. You've already done the work. So don't assume we think everybody in here is broken and everybody in here needs to be healed. Some of you are the healer. Some of you need to step out of your shell and start ministering to other people. If you're older in here and you've conquered it, then minister to the young families here. Minister to the young couples here. But you can't be all prideful. You've got to tell the truth. Right. And Christians don't want to tell the truth. They want to go, oh, I'm delivered. No, you ain't. <laughs> you crazy as a roll lizard. Everybody knows it but you. <laughs> but if you've made it, then give what God has given you Amen. to other people. Amen. Does that make sense? Yeah. So here we go. Everybody say the truth. The truth. About who we are. About who we are. Let's go to the next one. The shadow. What is the shadow? And this is the word Pastor Kid and I want to give you. That's going to allow you to take it into your devotion. Take it into prayer. Okay? Because everybody in here has one. It just depends on what size it is. Right. All right? Pastor Kid, you want to read this one? What it is. I have to put my glasses <laughs> It is the accumulation of untamed emotions, less than pure motives, and thoughts that, while mostly unconscious, strongly influence and shape our behaviors. It is the, da it is the damaged, but most of the time hidden version of who you are. The shadow lives in our souls. It's the hidden version of who you are. Yeah. It's the hit. Pastor Mark's a corporate executive. And oh, he's amazing. I managed $1.2 billion. It was insane. I had five territories, traveled all the time. But I used up all my energy at work. And I came home tired, busted, and disgusted. And I, and I expect her to understand because I'm providing a good life. But my shadow, I never tamed it. My shadow, I never identified. So here I am. We had a supernatural way God introduced us. God brought us together. And I'm thinking because God brought us together, he must have healed everything in her and she don't have no work to do. But it's not true. Right. God brought us together to do the work. But our shadow, everybody say shadow. Shadow. Was devastating because ministry and, and success will push your shadow deep in the darkness. And you'll forget it's there. Right. Until it wants to come out. Right. But how many know the light of Jesus Christ, who is the light? He can shine that light, and he can get rid of that shadow, but it takes work. And you and I have to admit that there is a shadow. And it's the untamed emotions, but think about it this way, it's the hidden version of who you are. 
but it's not in your spirit. Now let me go back. Remember I said salvation don't take care of everything? Yeah. Salvation takes care of eternity, but you got to still live here on earth. Right. And your soul is where your health comes from. And the shadow's not in your spirit. That's why salvation didn't take care of it. The shadow is not in your body. That's why salvation didn't take care of it. The shadow's in your soul. And what does the Bible say? Renew your mind so you can prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So you can be anointed in your spirit like I was, but your soul be messed up. And no success is going to heal it. Right. If you don't identify it. And, you know, if you're single in here, this is the time for you to deal with those things. Yes, please. You know, because we, in our season of singleness, and he had been divorced as well, in our season of singleness, we didn't take the time to address those issues that were in the show. I had strong distrust. You know, my husband. Tell cheated, him why. My husband, my husband cheated on me and had babies with someone else. We had been married for 14 years and we had two children of our own. He just, I came home one day, suitcases were there and he was leaving. I had no idea anything was wrong. So I had such a distrust, not just because of that. My father abandoned me in the womb. So my stepfather didn't want me. I was like a piece of furniture. I was a byproduct of my mom. So he treated his two kids like they were, but I had to do everything for myself. I worked since I was 13 years old. I paid for everything I've ever gotten. Um, myself, you know, so I didn't trust men right. to be there. Now, as an eight-year-old, my only father I knew was my grandfather, and he died at eight, so I took that as abandonment because he left me uh, to try to take care of myself. So I was like, okay, I can't depend on a man to be there. I have to do it myself. So I had a lot of confidence in me, and I didn't trust anybody else around me. So when he came, who's totally trustworthy, totally trustworthy. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> All the things that happened to me in my past got dumped on him. And he never did anything to make me believe any of the stuff. He, did not, he didn't create any of the offenses. He didn't do anything to me. However, he had to live with it because you're cheating. What are you doing? You're going to leave like everybody else. I put all that stuff on him. But in my season of singleness, I should have been seeking God to Come heal on. those places in my heart so that when God sent me who he had for me, he wouldn't have a broken vessel to deal with. Woo. That's big. You know? So, so you know, although he had more issues than I had, <laughs> um, I had some hidden things. Like I said, in my heart, I had things. Um, he had outward expressions, and most of mine was inward. So that's her shadow. Mm -hmm. Here's my biggest shadow. Got me kicked out of Purdue. I went to Purdue University, had a full-time job with 3M in a corporate executive management program, off the chain. Got kicked out my senior year for putting somebody in the hospital. I put him in the hospital, threw his roommate out the second-story window, and beat him until six of my fraternity brothers pulled me off of him. Went back to Purdue. They had a trial and a hearing. Kicked me out. Why? Because here is the essence of my shadow, and you have to name and claim yours. You say, I'm not claiming nothing. It's already there claiming you. Here's mine. So I'll share with you mine. You figure out yours in prayer. And if you're honest, God will tell you. Take my kindness for weakness, and you get the devil. I'm nice. I've never started a fight, never been a bully. But take my kindness for weakness and watch what happens. I was breaking up a fight. That's how I got in the fight. And as I was breaking the fight up, trying to make sure everybody was at a toga party, I was drunk, I was towed up. I was like, hey, bro, we just need to party. And then the dude, <laughs> and the dude, no, for real, and the dude hit me. My knees were ashy. That's another story. But anyway, <laughs> so the dude, he hits me, Pastor Mauricio, and I step back, I just start laughing. I have a real high pain tolerance. So I'm like, what? And then three of them jump me. So I go home, the shadow comes out, I put the black combat boots on, put my black hoodie on, and I told you, we went to the house, the dude that opened the door, we threw him out the second story window. The other guy that hit me was sleep, boom, broke his jaw, broke his ribs, he was in the hospital. Because he took my kindness for weakness. I'm being kind. So the shadow I never took care of when I was single, I brought that shadow to her. Does this make sense? It's the hidden version. But my success made everybody think I didn't have it. Right. And they thought I was the one. 
Because I'm very assertive. I'm very direct. Right. Yeah, I'm very direct, very assertive, and I'm, it's point blank. And everything was going on was honest. I'm gonna be truthful. Yeah, and please. You tell me oh. if I'm lying. No, no. It was you. <laughs> <laughs> so he was the head. The head creates everything. Anyway, um, but it, it was him and it, oh, responding, boy. responding to the behavior. Yeah. Uh, things of that That's nature. True. So, but then when I say, "Oh, this is going on," you know, you go. I will go to Pastor, and I say, "Pastor, this is." And he's like, "Kendra, you just need to go somewhere and sit down because I t I'm very direct. So if you just sit down somewhere and be quiet, it'll be okay." And I'm thinking, "No," you know. And I'm like, "It was it was overlooked because he was so amazing." And it was hidden. Are y'all hearing this? So you could be sitting yeah. out there and just be totally amazing. Doesn't mean you don't have no shadow. Right. And you got to get that thing out during devotion. Yes. Let's show you a picture. Oh, yeah. You know the story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Huh? So Dr. Jekyll comes past Virginia during the day and saves people, helps people. But he has Mr. Hyde. And Mr. Hyde comes at night. And so nobody knows that Dr. Jekyll is Mr. Hyde. Right. Mr. Hyde is Dr. Jekyll's shadow. And you know the story. Dr. Jekyll kills himself because he could no longer control, control. Mr. Hyde. Whatever you hide from God, whatever you hide from people, whatever you hide in the presence of God is going to come back and destroy you. And whether you're single or married, if you don't deal with this shadow in the presence of the Lord, Mr. Hyde grows stronger and Dr. Jekyll grows weaker. I almost got in a fight one time <laughs> on Sunday morning. Yeah. Somebody did something to my daughter. I was an associate pastor at the time and I was being really nice. So I approached him as Dr. Y'all shouldn't have invited me, huh? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, you could have did way better. Okay, okay. So, so, so he did something to my oldest daughter. And I'm like, oh, heck no. But I was calm, wasn't I? When I was calm in the very beginning. I just he got tried to be preaching. diplomatic. I tried to be diplomatic. Dr. Jekyll, I said, hey, come into my office. Let's talk. Kendra's in the office already. She's typing on the computer because we shared an office. I'm sitting here behind the desk past Mauricio. He's sitting right there. And so I start to ask him about what he did. He touched my daughter, right? And so I said, hey, you know, what's going on? He don't answer my question. He just says, if you want something, you can jump. <laughs> So now, what did I tell you my shadow is? If you take my kindness, kindness for weakness, weakness, you get. <laughs> it's Sunday morning. Pastor Diego is walking. It's a mega church, 6,000 people. He's walking down the hallway with the security. Pastor Kendra knows me. She's typing. I heard her go. Duh, 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 duh. She stopped. <laughs> and I looked, and everything just slowed down, and I saw myself throwing him through the window. So I'm sitting behind <laughs> the thing, and I jump up. I'm like, What? And Kendra cuts me off, makes me run around the desk at that time. <laughs> makes me run around the desk. Now I'm Mr. Hyde up in here. Pastor Diego's walking down the hall, security. I said, I quit. He said, why? I said, I'm ready to beat his. And I said, a word that describes the buttocks. <laughs> no, you got to hear me. You got to hear me. I am a pastor. I am the associate pastor of a 6,000 member church. Come on, I'm talking to somebody up in here. And I am anointed. We lay hands on the sick and they recover. We have 1,200 kids. And I am getting ready to beat the buttocks of someone. <laughs> Why? Because Mr. Hyde is not the same thing as Dr. Jekyll. And thank God for my wife cutting me off. So we say it like this and we're going to move on. I carry two things right. inside of one person. Yes. What are they? The lion and the lamb. Wow. Rage and rage peace. and peace. So this is my confusion. Some of you might have it. One of, one of the families we know, he lost his whole family in one night. Mm -hmm. Wife and little babies. The police call me and say, you've got to come to the hospital we're going to arrest him, and we don't want to arrest him. They have his five-year-old on a slab. They die in one night. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you how because it's private, but it was really, really bad. So they get up, and they call me. He's going crazy. And if I told you the whole circumstance, you would understand why. He's going nuts. 
bro. And I get to the hospital. The sheriffs escort me back, and I pick him up, huh? I do this all the time at church. I picked him up. Boom! And release peace into him. He goes limp. Yeah. Wakes back up. And I take him back, and we have to identify his five-year-old. I carry peace. Yeah. We had a healing service last night. Yeah. Healing service two Sundays ago. We had a lady healed of HIV, documented by the doctor in the church. Amen. I carry peace. I'll pick people up 250 pounds yeah. at church. Boom! Carry them. Drop them. Peace. But I carry rage, too. And I've been asking God, God, what is going on? And I just got the revelation. He said, Jesus said, you're like me. I said, what? <laughs> he said, Mark, you carry the lion and the lamb. But you use them in the wrong place. The lion is in the house. Yeah. People get the lamb. I'm supposed to get into the world and conquer and be the lion of the tribe of Judah. I'm supposed to be the, come on, man, I'm talking to you. I'm supposed to be the lion outside conquering, being successful, building businesses. And I'm supposed to come home and be the lamb. Lamb doesn't mean weak. It means sacrifice. Behold the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. I was supposed to come home, not, doc, not Mr. Hyde, and I was supposed to take away the sins of my family. I was supposed to cover my family, but I can't because I have a shadow. So I go to counseling every week. So I can learn how to carry these two animals, but use them in the right place. Right. Oh, that's a good place to clap. You didn't clap. Are you getting anything? It's huge. Okay, Dr. How, Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Next. How do you, you know what's your shadow? You One. can put them all up. Okay. The inability to connect and have intimacy in relationships and marriage. Woo. Just read them, then we'll come back to them. Okay. Dismissing the people close to you when they're bringing personal issue up about you. Repeating behavior even though the consequences remain yeah. negative. That's big. Doing and saying things out of fear of what others may think. And becoming busier and avoidant rather than reflective when there is conflict. Just do one of them because of the time. Um, do, I want to do, do the one, one with, yeah. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. do that one. Okay. The, the inability to connect and have intimacy in relationships and marriage. Um, I came from a family where even though it was like dysfunctional, my stepfather was an alcoholic. There was a lot of domestic abuse. Every weekend there was a fight in the house. You know, he's beating on my mom, all that good stuff. But my mother stayed and until he passed away. So they were married 40-something years. And, um, but I, I learned, you stay regardless. You know, so that's in me. His father and mother, they divorced. His when dad, I was 12. when he was 12, his dad remarried, has had three wives. Um, so when conflict comes, his tendency is to run. So, if I got I, the right pants on. Not now, but it was to run. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm like, regardless, come hell or high water, we're together, we're, gonna, we're in it till the wheels fall off. And he's like, I'm out. You know how many times I turn around and he's got his duffel bag going to his mom's house? Not recently. That's been some years ago. But that yeah, was tell it. yes. <laughs> but but that's what he would do because whenever I would bring up something that he didn't want to deal with at the time, or whenever there was an issue, he is but he would run, and he was very very avoidant. Avoidant. Right. And then also the 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 thing of intimacy. He had a very difficult time with intimacy. And I didn't know, I said, what is going on with this guy, you know? And I found out his mom and dad didn't even share a bedroom. My whole life. So he never saw them even kiss. Never. They worked and they took care of the house and they took care of him. You know how I knew they were getting divorced? I walked in at 12 and they were sitting next to each other. No, that's true. I saw them sitting next to each other. And I said, oh, they're getting divorced. Because they never were even around each other. So it was very, you know, being married into that, and you come from, I come from, okay, you work things through, you stay there, and you, you know, the good thing. And, and then he's like, we're good. I'll just work 15 hours a day. You know, I'll stay gone, because that's what his dad did. Um, and he thought everything was supposed to be okay. And to expect to have a healthy marriage doing that, that it was very unhealthy. Shadows stop you from connecting just for different reasons. 
and to be honest, uh, we probably, and this is the honest God truth, just started connecting right. uh, two to three years ago, and we've been married 25 years. But I'm saving the world, being busy, being super pastor, yeah. writing books, traveling around the world. Yeah. So I don't have to deal with, you have time singles to deal with it right. before you impact another generation. Yes. Married, you got to get it together. You got to get it together. And you have to do whatever work you have to do. You have a wonderful church. You have wonderful teaching. You have a free conference. That's insane. I'll be charging y'all. You have a free, <laughs> you have a free, no, I'm serious. That's what Rachel said it's free. And I was like, <coughs> silly. But you have time. You have time. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to the next slide. A few more points. Are you points? sure? Okay. But we only got nine minutes. Are you? Okay. 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 Are you okay? okay? I just want to be respectful. Okay. I just want to be respectful of Well, we of talked house. a little bit about being busier and avoidant rather than reflective when there is um, conflict. Yeah. So can we go back to number five? So mm -hmm. this is a big one, Pastor Marie. So this is a big one. So watch this, babe. Mm -hmm. Becoming busier and avoidant rather than reflective. We have some products you're going to be able to see later. We did a series at our church called Understanding How You Attach to God. Right. Oh, my gosh. So there are four dimensions, right? And I won't get into all of them. You got to get the little things. Only 10 bucks, but you got to get it. <laughs> but avoidant has two dimensions. And this is going to help somebody in here. And God's going to deliver somebody right now while I speak to you. Avoidant is this. Because, see, you might not think. You think avoidant means run away. That's not what avoidant is. Avoidant has two dimensions. There is self and others. Watch what avoidant is. Positive self, negative, negative others. others. So, so that causes two, number two, as a shadow. Listen again. Avoid it is positive self, negative others. So when she brings something to me, God has put her as my helpmate, right? So we can do things, but she's, she's there. She doesn't lie to me. She's not trying to hurt me, but I'm hurting her. So she's trying to express to me how I'm hurting her, but she can't express it to me because I am positive self. Negative others, avoidant personalities, avoidant shadows, you never see who you are and you always project it on the other, other person. person. So then it causes you not to connect, because so why would I connect with a criminal? <laughs> Does this make any sense? Do you see how I was an emotional terrorist? But do you see how I'm not going to deal with it because I'm Superman outside? Big old church, yeah. right? She's got to be crazy because on Sunday, look at God show up. Avoidant is positive self, negative others, and it's a shadow. Yes. You have to ask God to let you see who you are right. and you stop looking at who they are. Right. Take the beam Blindness. out of your own eye, right? right? Yeah. So you can see the splinter in your neighbor. Singleness or married, you've got to make sure you're not avoided. All right. Thank you, Pastor, for letting us do that. Let's go to the next one. We're almost done. So here are the consequences. I will pick up the pace. Here's the consequences of ignoring your shadow. You can put them all up for us. Number one, your shadow will undermine the best of who you are. Emotional intelligence. How many of y'all know what emotional intelligence is? They call it EQ, emotional quotient. It's more important than IQ. You can be the smartest person in the room, but if you cannot navigate yourself and people, it doesn't matter. Does that make sense? So now watch this. Emotional intelligence, um, they tell you that it, your shadow will undermine the best of who you are because Mr. Hyde keeps popping out. He's supposed to only be out in the nighttime, Pastor Virginia, but he creeps into Dr. Jekyll's office. And then you start seeing that you can't keep a job. Come on, somebody. Yeah. That people don't like you at the job yeah. because your emotional intelligence dealing with your shadow is 58% of success in relationships. Number two, your shadow will limit your ability to connect and relate to others in a healthy way. So I was not intimate at all in the first part of our relationship. That don't mean it wasn't, I wasn't having sex. No, 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 no. Uh oh, somebody just got offended. Oh, relax. You watch worse than that on TV. <laughs> but I was not intimate. Oh, no holding hands. Did I do that? No. Oh, okay. No, no holding hands. No, no hugging. Do you hear me? Right? No foreplay. Come on. Come on. Don't look at me like that. No talking. 
No talking. No talking. No, unless Go it two was weeks. unless it was a business. We we transacted business, business with the kids, business with the house, business with the ministry, things that have to to, to have to, but not really getting to know one another and where we are. Why? Tell me why. Why was that like that? You didn't want to hear it. No, no. You tell me. She just told you. But where did my shadow come from? My childhood. I don't have to talk to you. I paid the bill. What you what you want to talk for? Does this make any sense? Huh? It was huge. And so this is the worst question she can ever ask me. I, I try to answer it now, <laughs> but when she asks me, I want to kill myself. Why do you love me? Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of you men are just like me. A lot of you men are just like me. I show you I love you. Why do you have to ask me a question? Because she wants to connect with me. That's intimacy. Can you give me a, a little mic? Uh, can I use it? I'm going to be messing with my face the whole time. Does this make sense? I don't want to connect. Right. She needs it. She's a woman. She needs to feel that connection. And taking care of her is not loving her. Right. Because you can take care of three women. <laughs> and not love any of them. <laughs> See how violent she is? Take my kindness for weakness. <laughs> the two become one. Okay. Number two, your shadow will limit your ability to connect. Number three, your shadow will blind you to the shadow of others. Please listen to yes. me. If you don't take this into the presence of God and be healed from it, you won't be able to see the shadow in others. Can I say something to you if you're single? Yes. If you are single, you will grab somebody with a bigger shadow than yours. And because you won't look at your shadow, you'll ignore theirs. And let me tell you something about attraction. It don't get rid of shadows. Do you need me? Oh, you can take Come on. Don't touch my butt, dude. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing with you. I'm not playing. There you go. Thank you. Give him a hand clap. He's serving. <laughs> Number four, you can't escape your shadow. The real you will come, come out, out of you no matter, no matter who's with, with you. Ooh, put that in your phone. That's good. That's so good. That's so good. Pat myself on the back. Watch. Watch, we call it the bump, bump, right? We call it the bump. We call it the bump. See, here's what happens. Here's what happens. Watch this singles. I'm going to help you out, right? So you date somebody. I find Storm right here, the superhero lady. I said, oh, sexy lady, I'd love to talk to you. Right? So I come, I come, and then her and I are doing good. We're going to coffee. Everything's cool. And then what happens? We bump. Then Mr. Hyde comes. No, listen to me. But... What's in you will come out of you no matter who's with you. So here's what you got to watch as a single person. Why? This is huge, man. Dr. Fields. Uh, I bump Kendra. Dr. Hyde comes out. I think she's the problem, Pastor Virginia. She ain't the problem. She's just the one I bumped, bumped into. So the single person, without any wisdom, trades her out. Come here real quick, real quick, real quick. Hurry, hurry, hurry. What's your name? What's up? Come on up. <laughs> no, watch. Watch. Now watch how this works. Oh, I'm in love with you. God sent me kids. Pastor Kendra, God spoke. I had a vision. You had pizza, but I had a vision. <laughs> and then I bump her. Ah, it doesn't work. Her fault. What do I do? Pick Jenny. <laughs> but guess what? Mr. High's the problem, not Kendra. So then I find Jenny. And then Jenny and I bump. bump. What happens? Mr. Hyde. Mr. Hyde comes out. So guess what? Come here real quick, real quick, real quick. I hope your husband <laughs> don't get me. Your husband's like, don't you bump her. Don't you touch her. I will mess you up. I'm sorry. What's your name? What is it? Alfonso. What up, dude? What's your name? I'm going to bump your wife, bro. So edgy. So look, it's not, it's got to be Kendra. It, it's got to be Jenny. No, no, it's my shadow. You hear me? God's trying to set some of you free from multiple relationships. 
Then I bump. What's your name again? Angie? And hey, what's up? Then I bump Angie. <laughs> And then the shadow comes out again, Pastor Mauricio. And the reason all these ladies are standing over here wounded from Mark is because Mark will not deal with Mr. Hyde. Mark will not deal with his shadow. Mark wants to hide in church, hide under preaching, hide under praise, hide under worship. But we have three ladies who have been wounded and hurt because I won't deal with Mr. Hyde. And in public, everybody affirms Dr. Jekyll. Thank you, ladies. Does this make sense? So listen, listen, we're out of time. We're out of time. I want to show you this. Uh, go one battle. more. Shadow so I've just got to pick something. Shadow battle. Yeah. So everybody say shadow battle. Shadow. So just so you don't be religious on us and tell us that you've, you've made it, Paul even had a shadow battle. Here it is. And I have no clear knowledge of what I am doing, he said. For that which I have a mind to do, I do not. But what I have hate for, that I do. Look at this confusion. But if I do that which I have no mind to do, I am in agreement with the law that the law is good. The law just tells you what's good or bad. So verse 17. So it is no longer I who do it, but the what? Sin, sin living in me. If you don't deal with your shadow, your shadow will become a sin. Does, it, does this make sense? If you don't deal with a shadow, your shadow will become a sin. Go to the next one. For I am conscious that in me, that is, in my flesh, there is nothing good. I have the mind, but not the power to do what is right. Look at that. For the good which I have a mind to do, watch this, Pastor Rito, I do not. But the evil which I have no mind to do, that I do. But if I do what I have a, no mind to do, it is no longer I who do it, but, but the, the sin, sin living, living in, in me. me. Paul is describing the concept of a shadow. And he's like, I have to keep coming to Christ so this shadow doesn't take me out. Does this make sense? Yes. If you don't deal with your shadow, people will be hurt or even sometimes physically killed or emotionally killed. Can you play for me? Can you play for me? Because oh, I'm going to pray for you, Pastor Kid and I now. I want to show you this picture. Just go to the last one with the vulture and the boy. Pastor Marie, so we have a ministry in Uganda. And we minister every month. It's Philadelphia Christian Center. We partner with them. And people die of AIDS. They die. It's just terrible. We send the equivalent of $1.5 million in their money. Every, every week they take that and they buy food and they feed people in the villages in different places. So Pastor Steve Okanye is my pastor over there. And he sent me this picture. Now there's a lot. How many of y'all have ever seen it? Yeah, a couple. There's a lot of versions about it. But he lives there. So let me tell you about this picture. So it's a Pulitzer Prize picture. So this little boy was heading to the feeding center because he was starving to death. So a, a, a photographer stopped Pastor Kendra and he said, oh my God, look at this picture. So he takes the picture. It wins a Pulitzer Prize. But he's depressed. He's depressed, Pastor Mauricio, because he keeps getting calls about the picture. Now, you might say, that's a great thing. But he keeps getting calls, and he keeps getting a question that he can't answer. Guess what the question is? What happened to the boy? Right. Do you know why he can't answer it? He doesn't know. Why doesn't he know? He didn't care. He did not care. And he was so worried about what he was doing that he forgot who he was. Listen. You are not that busy that you can't pick up a baby and get the baby to the feeding center. So in 1994, he commits suicide and kills himself because he can't take it anymore. His shadow got him. He was doing his job. Some of you today are doing your job. Come down here, baby. Some of you are doing your job, but your job don't eliminate your shadow. Some of you are serving in Thank ministry, but you. serving in ministry doesn't eliminate your shadow. Some of you are retired today, and your family's good. You're like us. You have grandkids, maybe great-grandkids, but children don't eliminate your shadow. I just want you to sit right where you are, and I want you to lift your hands tonight as we close. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we just, it might have seemed like a drive-by tonight, but we trust your spirit. So we leave with them a label. If they cannot name it, they cannot tame it. 
So we leave with them a label tonight. The shadow. Paul described it. But Father, we pray for deliverance and healing right now. Father, yes. I pray for the singles. Yes, yes. That, Father, they have been given a great opportunity. Singleness and marriage are equal in the Bible. Some of them are in such a hurry to be married so they can do their ministry and they don't realize that singleness and marriage both just express Christ in two different equal ways. Amen. Father, give them peace and have them slow down and come into your presence since they have some time. And ask you, we ask you to heal their shadow. Father, we shared our marriage issues tonight. Because there are married people here that are struggling. They had no idea why they can't connect. Yes. They had no idea why they stay away from home. They had no idea why they can't talk without arguing or talking about business. And it's because, Father, each one has a shadow. Father, cause intimacy tonight. Yes. Let them go home tonight. And intimacy doesn't mean sex. It means connection. Into me I see. Father, help the men here yes. to learn to be a lion at their job, but be a lamb at the house and not come in the house roaring because they're tired, because they've used up their lamb. Father, we pray for deliverance and healing tonight. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen.